Time flies when you're learning facts. <laughs> you, or or <laughs> questioning something someone's telling yeah, you. Yeah, just let me Google that. Guy. Are you sure about that? I'm not sure. Imagine if everything gets wiped out, but this podcast is the only source of information <laughs> that survives. <laughs> it's just like this is all. They have. I really, I really, I, and they I, go, and this happened, I worry. And then they go, "What? What did they tell you?" They said they didn't know and couldn't be asked to Google it. <laughs> I don't, uh, <laughs> really we're trying to rebuild civilization, and these two morons are all we have to go off of. Actually, we found one of their bodies frozen. We've reanimated them. Just kill them. Just, yeah, just fucking shoot them. Year is with Red and Bobby. Welcome to the Year Is podcast, the podcast where every episode, me and my co-host and colleague and friend Bobby Mayer go back. Th- friend, why is friend third? I because that's the order of what we're doing today, isn't it? We're, we're doing a podcast. I don't know. You're my friend. We uh, <laughs> we go back to a year in history and we look at all the weird, interesting things. Not all of them. We pick a few and then we talk about it. That yeah, yeah. That year. So if you're into history, this might be the place to be. How long have we been friends for? Definitively. Five years. Yeah, but we met. When when was it? We met 2015, was it? 2015. In Edinburgh, obviously. No. And, and maybe more than five years. I remember you came to a preview of mine once, um, early days. Before I'd done, I think it was like 2016. So I'd say that was a friendly thing to do, come to a preview. Did I tell you what I thought? Yeah, you were like, smile more. I was actually thinking about it in the bath. I was listening to a podcast, which I'm not allowed to mention anymore, because my <laughs> wife will get killed if I mention it. Uh, yeah, one Can of our listeners, explain? one of our listeners, is threatened to uh, threaten to threaten my wife on a hundred false Instagram accounts if I mention a certain podcaster again. So I can't mention him, but he was interviewing Louis C.K. the other day. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a lot of people. And uh, Louis C.K. said, uh, you know, when you try and do something that's not natural, like. You know, people say to me, go and smile on stage. It's like, if I don't feel like it, I'm not going to do it because it has the opposite effect. Well, I don't think I meant smile. I meant have fun. Yeah, but you, I can't just have fun. You can't tell someone to have fun. Well, you can. What, why don't you? Oh, you, you, should, you, you should just send messages to ISIS prisoners then. Just go, have fun. Really? Yeah, they'll sit there and go, this is bad. I want to see. So you like, no, have com- fun. you like watching comedians that are not having fun. While no, but you can't ha- have fun without having fun. You know what I mean? You can't fo- fake it. Otherwise, it looks bad. Or you look like a no, no, I wasn't saying fake it. I'm saying try to find genuine fun. Mm. If you, while if you doing... knew the answer to how to find I've that. I've seen you without, actually enjoy yourself on stage. You would be a multi-billionaire. But I've seen you actually that. enjoy yourself on stage yeah. and you kill so hard when yeah, you're but I actually can't help, having fun. I can't help it. And I've seen you when you're not having fun. You know I never do well when you're there. And there's a reason for that because I can feel you in the room and Wait, it puts me off. It's my fault you don't do well. No, no, no. Whenever. When you're not there, I kill so hard. And when you're there, <laughs> I don't there's always a problem. And it's because you're there and I can feel you <laughs> no. in the room. I can like feel you just going and I'm like, oh, God, here he is. What 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 am I? I don't just a uh, a cancer. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Excuse me. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I, I I don't know. But I'm right. You when you have fun on stage, you kill really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, but I can't dictate what mood I'm in. No, but you. <laughs> Yeah, people actually do dictate what mood they're in. They don't go on stage and cry while they do their act. No. Okay. And they they don't go on stage and be like, oh, I'm angry. I better. The same reason I couldn't false crying, which uh, some comedians can do if you ever go to Edinburgh. Some people do it to a queue every night, which is psychotic. (laughs) No, I think it's. Instead of winning an award for that, you should get arrested at the end of your show (laughs) because you're a fucking psychopath. Or a good actor. You're not a comedian, you're a manipulator, and you've got no jokes. Anyway. I can't fight cry on stage, but I also couldn't fake, you know, like if I was doing a show about, you know, someone very close to me dying of a terminal illness. Okay. Even if no matter how upsetting that really was to me in real life. Yes. If I took that to the Edinburgh Fringe at the 45 minute mark every night, I couldn't, by the end of it, I'd be like, and you told it so many times, it's just like, oh yeah. And then they passed away and I was holding hands with them, you know, and that's what happens. Anyway, I've been Red Richardson, seeing a bit, follow me on Instagram at Red Richardson Comedy. You can't like, you know what I mean? Wait, you do like a dead dad show and plug your insta at the end? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do you think they do it? No, but just like it's not for their dead would, dad, is it? But you wouldn't want you you'd want the end of the show to be like, guys, follow me on Instagram. Yeah. Not just to like leave with whatever. I'd be like, I got some merch there. <laughs> what would the merch be? <laughs> Pictures of you and your dead father. <laughs> Yeah, just a just selfie on, by, on by the bed like that, yeah. <laughs> no, 
I just think I can't false things. You know, can you? I, In fact, I, I don't know why I'm talking to you about this. Anyone up from the circuit listening to this would be going, shut the fuck up, Bobby. The man notorious for bringing bad moods on stage. Yeah, but it's a fun bad mood. No, it's often not. <laughs> it is. Didn't Harry have to take your stage? Someone told me this at a gig the other night. Wait, Harry what? had to drag you off stage. You... I was in the middle of a psychotic breakdown. <laughs> yeah. I was having a breakdown. Why didn't you just have fun, I Bobby? One mental why, why breakdown. Why didn't you just Harry have fun? Harry had drags you off stage. One mental breakdown. <laughs> and then, and, and you're talking about it years later. <laughs> oh, are we playing the who had mental breakdowns game? No, right? no, no. We're talking about oh, gigs. Oh, no, 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 no. You're just bringing up my breakdown. So we can no, be... no, no. I didn't know it was a breakdown. Also, you can say it's a breakdown whenever you have a bad gig. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't that, a bad was, gig. Was, was a my brain was broken at the time. Okay, but you've often I, brought your moods on stage. There has yeah, been yeah, times. Yeah, I brought my moods on stage. But I, what I was trying to do was save you from my mistakes. What I think you do is you have two lives. And one of them, you think you're like Trevor Noah or something. This really together guy. I am Trevor and Noah. And then you forget that there's this other guy who goes out and does gigs with your face and your personality. And it's you as well. <laughs> Wait, I don't understand what you're saying. And what I'm saying is you judge me based on this you're sort being of judged. as if you're a assorted human being. When uh, the, Very together. On, on the contrary. I uh, woke up at 8.30 today. Did you? Very together. <laughs> when did you bet your kid woke up at 5? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my kid woke up earlier. Three and a half hours of screaming at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually I was like, all right, fine. Fine. I'll, I'll wake up. I'm very together lately, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I... Uh... But please don't threaten our wives. We uh, we like to threaten our wives as much we as the don't, next don't guy. Say that. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> we... No, I never listen. If anything, our wives threaten us. They threaten to leave, and we're worried about yeah. it. Yeah, and don't fake up, make up false accounts. If if the podcast, this podcast, was the reason they started getting abuse, and they go that thing you do, which is already embarrassing enough, and now I'm getting a hundred death threats from one of your insane listeners. Did they say death threats, though? I, what was it? Threats, Jody? Mm -hmm. 100, in, 100 accounts to troll your wife. Oh, yeah. Why do you need 100? Just do it from one. Well, 100, I think it feels like a swarm. Yeah. That's a lot. It is, yeah. Mm -mm. Being swarmed. Yeah. But now I feel like there's a gun to my head every time we do this podcast because I can't mention the podcast I was listening to that had Louis C.K. on it. I think Crystal Lee has been on it as well. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Haters will say it's photoshopped. Will say it's not photoshopped. Is is what? is the conversation this week? Prince Andrew. Wait, we're not talking about the royals again. No, which, this is in the news. Prince Andrew. What? You keep bringing the photo up the is photoshopped apparently because Gis this? Lane said that. Gis Lane said that. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. Oh shit, is, that's is not she, interesting. Should we talk about no, your dog, Bobby? No, but is she a trustworthy How source. How have the bins been? What where, where, what day do you take the bins out? Is she a here? trustworthy source. Gis Lane. Yeah. yeah, she was on Talk TV. You don't lie on Talk TV. Oh, really? You think Talk TV's a... <laughs> she looks terrible, by the way. Prison has not been kind to her. Well, we've... Uh, you know, she had 20 years of makeup. That was makeup yeah, that's true. we were seeing. Well, anyway, she says it's not true at all. Wow. Mm -hmm. And she thinks Je um, Jeffrey was killed. So there we go. Anyway, as that's been shut down... It uh, wasn't shut down. We will get into the time machine and go back... Hopefully there's something Bobby can talk about in this in this podcast. Uh, you just bring up the Royals every week. Let's do a podcast on light bulbs. Should we do that? That'd be interesting. That actually would be really interesting. Yeah, that, that should be really you good. Ever seen the Who movie? invented the light bulb? Thomas Edison. Mm, very well done. I think. Who invented the telephone? Jody. Was that also Was that Graham Bell? Yeah, it was. Alexander Graham Bell. Thank you very much. Is that why? Who invented the dream? Martin Luther King. Anyway. We're in the time machine. We're ready to go back. Where are we going? We're going to 1796. So I picked this year because it's... By the time you listen to this, this will be out of date and pointless. But it is Burns Night today. Do you know about Burns Night? No, it sounds like a British holiday. It's a Scottish holiday where yeah. Scots, bless them, uh, celebrate a poet called Robert Burns. Rabby Burns, some people call him. Rabid Burns. Okay. Um, he he was a poet. And tonight they celebrate him and they eat haggis. Do you know what haggis is? Yeah, I think everyone knows what haggis is. Do you want to explain it to our listeners? He might not. It's a food Scottish people eat. Yeah, What's, what is it? <laughs> it's uh, when they take like all the innards of the, the sheep. Yeah. And they they cook them. It's like a form of gruel, isn't it? Isn't it like the, the stomach? <laughs> 
a sheep stomach. It's sheep. And they shove sheep, all the organs yeah, it's into like it. Sheep minced with onion, oatmeal, spices, and salt. Okay. Um, I it's disgusting. I think I've never enjoyed it. I find it so weird that people are like, oh, haggis is disgust. Like I can't, I can't attest to it. I've tasted it. I, it was, it didn't leave a huge impression. But it always comes in that way. like sealed thing, and it just looks like. But the idea that like, oh, it's gross to eat the insides of an animal as opposed to you know its leg. Mm, well, the leg's better. I'd much rather eat your leg than your bum. You know. Uh, well, yeah, but. We're talking about the inside. So would you rather you inside rather eat about my, all your my, shit through my, it. my thigh? Yeah, of course, hundred percent. Because what have you done with your thigh? Stood up occasionally. Sad. Your insides processed all the crap. It's literally the bin of your body. Yeah. So no, I don't want to eat that. Okay. I'd rather eat one of your mugs than your bin. Do you know what I mean? My mugs. What's yeah. my mug? One of your tea mugs. <laughs> okay. Well, well, what's that on my body then? In this, in this uh, analogy. I don't know. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like, given the choice. What, my hands? Is that the mug? What would you rather eat, my intestine or my finger, you know? Your intestine? I'm, I'm dead as well. I'm not alive. <laughs> I'm not you don't have finger. to just get down on fours and nibble into my <laughs> just, stomach. Just cut. Sorry, Red. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, I, yeah, I'd much rather eat, like, breast or something than a, the, than a stomach. What about or a brain? rectum. No, I wouldn't want to eat brain either. No. Too many thoughts gone through there. <laughs> Makes you ill. Don't want to eat brains. Yeah, so he he was um he died this year in uh, in 1796 Paul Robert Burns passed away. Wait, he died that day, you mean? He died today. No, today is Burns night. But what does that mean? I um <laughs> it's just the day they celebrate Burns. You know? But you said he died today in 1796. No, today is Burns night. Twenty okay. fifth of January. But why? Why today and why not Christmas Day? Why is it? Why is it today? Because mm, it's the twenty fifth of January. It's a month after Christmas. So, so that can't be why. That they're there saying, has to be a reason. They're, they're saying that he's not quite Jesus. So I, I don't know this, but there has to be a reason. There why. isn't because he was died in uh, the twenty first of July. So, the so thing when is that, was his? They're birthday? saying that he's not quite Jesus. He's a month after Jesus, so he's not not, not there yet. And everyone's come to that final week of dry Jan. I think that was probably part of it. It's dry January is ending. You think dry January is a big part of it? <laughs> yeah. We'll do haggis to prepare us, to line our stomachs with sheep stomachs for the for the drinking next week. What is it, Jody? Do you know the real reason? It's the most obvious reason in the world. Today was his birthday. Today was his birthday. <laughs> I was... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. See? Wait, what did he do? He was a poet. Do you want to hear one of his poems? Yeah. Okay. Here's a famous Burns poem. Ye banks and braes, O bonny doon, how can ye bloom say fresh and fair? How can ye chant, ye little birds? And I say, weary foo, O care, <laughs> thou break my heart, thou warbling bird, that wantons throw the flowering I thorn. I have no idea what this means. Thou minds me, O departed joys, departed never to return. It means fuck all. I know it means something. Something to someone. It, but what they do is they spit this out. Someone decides it's good. Same with art. Doesn't really mean much. And then we all have to go, oh, it's so, it's so meaningful. Is it? Yeah. I feel like po poetry's had a bit of a brain drain mm. in modern times. Like, I think all the best artists a couple of New Years ago, the best, like, creative minds were going to poetry. Yeah, but Whereas now they don't. Now I would say very few, if any. Well, they be so he was a, considered really funny. So his poems are considered quite funny. The sound. I mean, I was laughing. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't. Fun. Wouldn't be dropping that on YouTube on Jan 29th, That's for sure. Uh, the Sunday just gone for you listeners. Uh, the Red Richards and Special. Um, but no, this is. Not... <laughs> Wait, are you still? You're still on the title. The Red. One hundred percent. Jody loves it. everyone else, but you loves it. I don't. Jo Jody, do you love the Red Richards and Special? Yeah, you told me what you were going for, and it fits. Yeah, yeah. Completely what you're going for with your kind of nice suit. And yeah, yeah. Like, so you wanted say, old school. So the title will be Red Richardson, the Red Richardson Special. On YouTube, it'll say that. But the actual title, you go, have you seen the Red Richardson Special? And they'll go, no. I better go check that out. It's the sort of title, it sounds like a guitar solo. It's like, Dan -le -neo -neo. you can imagine that, you know? Yeah. With it. So that's why it's cool. Yellow font, I've got. Cool okay. yellow font. Did you did you design a font yourself? No, Ben Kent, um, amazing director of it. He found, found the, the font. font. Okay, and then I just dis discovered the name of the font. I passed that information on to Jody, 
who uh, applied it to my poster for the special, which will have come out on the Sunday. Just go on if you haven't watched it. Just do it. Anyway, Burns had a very close brush with not being a national treasure. What happened? He was in financial difficulties due to his lack of success in farming. So <laughs> the, he was a the, farmer and a poet. The notorious money spinner farming, yeah. Okay. Poets now, I think comedians will probably be poets. Oh, that sounds so pretentious. Probably be TikTokers were poets, you know. God knows. But like now no one does it because you get no, no money or whatever, you know. And people laugh at you. And people, no one writes a poem. Imagine if someone said, oh, I've written a poem. You go, what? <laughs> Loser. <laughs> it's funny that NFT pictures are cooler than poems now. That's how down the fucking toilet this society's gone. The end is near, everyone. Anyway, he was in farming. He's making no money from his poems. No one wants to read his rhyming words. Um, and he took up an offer to work in Jamaica. Guess what was in Jamaica? Uh, a poet? No, a reggae school. I'm kidding. It was a sugar plantation. So he nearly became a bookkeeper. Assistant overseer of the slaves was nearly his job. He missed his boat a few times. Poets notoriously lazy. Probably got up about two o'clock. No okay. alarms back then as well. You're relying on a fucking rooster. So you got to go out at night and go, you, seven o'clock tomorrow morning. Roost. Start screaming. Start roosting. I don't even know what roosting means. I don't either. But anyway. So he missed his boat, sad. He missed his boat. So he never got to be a plantation owner. And that's why, because he'd only gotten on the boat, you know, suddenly, 10 years ago, students would be going, why do we celebrate Burns Night and have to eat fucking haggis uh, and read these poems that don't really make any sense? I think that's When he quite... was a slave administrator. <laughs> <laughs> I work in admin at the slave ship. <laughs> what? It's quite... <laughs> it's kind of like I trying to work at a, a, a plantation that has slaves mm. and not being able to is, I Even would say, worse. just as bad. Yeah, you weren't it's competent like, enough. People always talk about men who cheat, and it's like, yeah, yeah. Well, what about all the men that tried, but no one would fuck them? Exactly, yeah, those sloppy the, men at the bars. Those, the men the who tried yeah. to cheat and their wives couldn't, and those men who probably say, I've never cheated, and you're like, mm, mm -hmm. have you ever had the chance? You've never been given the chance. Yeah. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, so he nearly um, nearly went... This is a bit like your Russian TV thing, but you did it. <laughs> I did. Uh, we've covered that. Listen. I know, sorry. Too that's, what, that's what... This is what We're not allowed to talk about Prince Andrew. I've Russian said what television. I have to say about my time on Russia today. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, did you go on Russia today once? I would have done it. I remember no, no, once I went you on Russia saying... Today. It was a year. I was I on Russia today for a year. You saying to me, I was a bit of a Robbie Burns. You said to me, I'll try and get you in at one point. And I was so up for it. You know? <laughs> I, I think I tried. And the mm. Putin, Putin just didn't like your vibe. No, he was just like, nah. <laughs> but yeah, so he was going to go and uh, go and live in Jamaica and, and look after slaves. The thing is, this is why that's such a contradiction and such a problem is that he was like considered this giant socialist and man of the people and like voice of the people. So, so like what's it like now? It's like Stormzy. Fucking going to work at a sweatshop or something. No, Stormzy buying, being made CEO of like yeah, <laughs> of a of a giant sweatshop corporation. So, but this wasn't known when he was alive, right? This is just historically. Well, it would have been at the time. No one gave a shit back then. But also, no yeah. one was like, "Oh, you sure that's a bit problematic?" No one fucking cared, did they? Yeah, they were like, "Oh, you missed a boat to Jamaica, you yeah, bloody hell," you know. So, yeah, well, very conveniently, no one really talks about this in Scotland. And what, so so he's famous just for being a poet. They liked his poems. He was a poet, um, yeah. So he missed his plane to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> he missed his boat to Jamaica. Holy shit, there's planes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I missed it. <laughs> how, how, how annoying would it be if you're, it's like 1796 and there's planes, <laughs> and then you miss a plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Would have happened to people. Yeah. The, uh, the old rooster. Yeah, he missed the boat, and then they said he travelled to Edinburgh, which is just quite funny. He was going to go to Jamaica, and I'm going to actually go to Edinburgh. I rode a pony to Edinburgh, published his poems. They went viral, or whatever it was at the time. <laughs> and um, So a lot of people bought the book. Of everyone poems. loved the books, and everyone loved him. And then he started, like all poems, whenever there's a poem lying about, what else is there, usually? Illegitimate children, if the poet is a man. So he had loads of kids with loads of different women. 
Yeah. Loads of affairs, got married uh, to a lady. He actually wanted to go to Jamaica because this lady's family was so annoying. <laughs> so I think I'd rather go and administer, do slave spreadsheets or whatever it was he would be doing out there. And uh, then he died at the age of 37. That's how old I am. Mm, that is, in tr- is, it is indeed, isn't it? That makes you think. Mm-hmm. Well, you've got some stand-up out. Yeah, I've, you know? I've released my... Cockroach on... Uh... On YouTube. YouTube. Migrate. So, you know, sure. that's good. So, like, he just wrote poems and everyone liked his poems. That's yeah, everyone really liked cool. the poems. Everyone loved his poems. And, you know, they are like, I'm sure I read that badly. I'm sure if a Scottish person read that, so let's say Billy Connolly read it and you play the bagpipes and it's windy for some reason and he's still on a hill and he sort of screams that into the fucking rain steaming on his face, everyone would get a bit excited. Yeah. Me reading it in this studio with the cynicism of an Englishman, it doesn't really have the same effect. But I'm sure at the time they were good. Do you have a, po- a poet you'd like to read? No. Do you like poems? No, but, no I don't think there's anyone. I read them at school. And they go, what does he mean by this? It's like, I make stuff up. Look, I'm not a famous poet. I'm going to put that out there. I, but jokes have to work. Jokes can't be ambiguous. You know what I mean? So we write jokes. Poems, if someone said, write a poem, and I went, the black fog fell upon the... Why did he say this? I go, because it came into my head at that point, and it didn't sound too bad with the thing that came after it. Stop overthinking this. It's like uh, Noel Gallagher, Oasis. They say, who's Sally? He's like, I don't have a fucking clue. Wonderwall. He said at the time it was dedicated to his girlfriend, then wife. He says, that's absolute bullshit. I just said that. Because if you write a love song and you're with someone, you kind of have to pretend it's about them. But they're like, what's a Wonder Woman? He's like, I don't know. I heard it in a George Harrison song in 19, that came out in 1968. And he's honest, you know what I mean? Whereas these guys would go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for fucking 400 years, students and pupils at schools have to analyse something that uh, basically probably a drunk who was sleeping with a relative came up with on a whim in the midst of a heavy syphilis outbreak. Yeah. So wait, you're saying... 1796 was 400 years Whatever. ago. Whatever. I'm just talking about poetry in general. <laughs> okay. Just think about what I'm saying, not the specifics. You know, <laughs> the, the, specific. the feeling of what I'm saying. Like it's a poem. But, um, <laughs> I, I, I listen to that history podcast for the, the feeling, not the facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that kind of is us. I hate to say it. Um, we're passionate. <laughs> we're, the, we're, the poem, we're the poems of history. Yeah, yeah. It's just very foggy and dewy and however that makes you feel. And I think also if you're a poet, you don't think in a sort of logistical way where you overanalyze every detail of what you say. I think you feel it because that's what a poem is, you know? So these absolute fucking, let's call them con artists who then make a career out of just analyzing what you did. And you go, did you ever do media studies at school? No? No. Okay, but well, they'd be like, you know, the shutters, what does that represent? It's like, absolutely fuck all. You know, just like, what are you talking about? Someone needed a job. Someone didn't want to learn to t- about geography. So someone made up a thing is what this smells like to me. Yeah. This is what I'm saying about poems. And there we have it. Poems decapitated by historian. Clip it up, Jody. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> We don't need to clip that. I don't know. Not that I, I'm enjoying it, but I don't know if that's mm. the clip. Yeah. Is that the international symbol for clip now? Wait, what's, what's clip it up again? I just made that. Clip Sir, it. A circle with your hand. No, it's square. Clip it, clip it up, Jody. It's a square. Oh, yeah. Okay. But that's, that's the merch t shirt. Clip it up, Jody. When you say something cool, you just go, clip it up, Jody. Yeah? <laughs> I feel like the merch t-shirt the merch t-shirt would say where do you bury her underwear Jody <laughs> where do you bury her underwear <laughs> <laughs> but our merch is made from 100% recycled underwear that Jody brings in by the bag full every week <laughs> yeah that he steals from the clotheslines of children he's murdered oh stop it didn't have to be kids <laughs> <laughs> well he's a kid killer we've established that oh about my him. fucking god I wish I hadn't interjected now and just let you carry on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god don't be ashamed Jody that's in your past well and your future just not your present <laughs> not, not, not right now <laughs> yeah. that's why we, when people say why do you do the podcast with Jody because for that one hour and a half the world is safer than yeah, it's ever yeah, been yeah. <laughs> we're <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're keeping someone safe. Mm. Burns' name was absent from any, any abolition petition. 
Yeah, he's strangely silent <laughs> on the question of chattel slavery compared to other contemporary poets. So most other poets are kind of like, this isn't great. So there we go. Your hero was nearly a slave trader. Oh, Bonnie Banks. <laughs> okay. What's next? What's next? I like this. April 2nd, 1796. The only night of the supposed Shakespearean play, Vortigern and Rowena ends in the audience's laughter. So this is very interesting. A man called William Henry Island, was, uh, he used to write gothic novels, and his dad was uh, a famous publisher. And his dad collected anything Shakespearean, artifacts, anything he could get his hands sure. on, documents, stuff like that. Anyway, William Henry Island was, uh, was kind of successful, not like bad. His dad used to publish like travel logs and stuff like that, but he'd do graphic no gothic novels and he wasn't doing too badly. But he then started becoming obsessed um, with this famous fraudster called Thomas Chatterton. Okay. Who was a kid, who was like a prodigy. Actually, I looked into him a lot and he basically made up this fake writer Named Shakespeare. No, no, no. So we'll get back to that in a second. Sorry. But this guy made up a fake writer. Okay. Called, sorry, Jody, Thomas Rowley. And he, when he was 11 years old, he said, basically, I found the writings from this guy from medieval times called Thomas Rowley. And everyone's like, oh, my God, he's found and discovered this undiscovered medieval monk who was a famous, who was a writer. He's not famous, but he was like, look, look he at this. He just created a great story behind his own writing. Yeah, so he made that's, this story really behind smart. his own great writing. Marketing. Brilliant. Made this marketing. Everyone was like, this is great. Then this fucking arsehole found him out. He was like, this is a fraud. 11 years old, by the way. But he had written whatever he's releasing. He had written at 11. He'd written it completely himself, you know? And so he'd written it from this world. And this kid was, like, born into poverty. He had nothing. Okay. And, like, his dream was to make his mum and his sister, like not have to work forever and stuff like that. Created this fake alias and wrote these things. And everyone's like, he's a fraud. It's like, he's not really. Fraud would be making it. Yeah, he's still wrote stolen, it. Stealing people's stuff. And he was 11. He was 11. He's a genius. Yeah, so he committed suicide at the age of 17. Oh, yeah. God. And like, even the way he spoke. You know, I know when people speak in olden times, they sort of sound older than they are. But <laughs> even this guy, even for the times, the way he spoke was pretty... Uh, pretty insane like so he fell into a grave when he was walking with his friend and uh, his friend helped him out because it was a dug grave that was about to be filled with someone else their friend helped him out and uh said i'm happy to help you out the grave because i'm resurrecting a genius and chatterton replied saying my dear friend i've been at war with the grave for some time now 17 years old when i was 17 I go, can you buy me four cans of strongbow please <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> yeah, so um, that's that's yeah. That, so this guy became obsessed. So did he ever release his own writing as himself after that scandal? No, and they, they released it bits after he died. It became a bigger thing. Okay. So everyone went, actually, this guy's a genius, and it is you know it's impressive writing and stuff like that. And we should have gone, not not this eleven year old's a liar. Maybe <laughs> gone this eleven year old isn't just picking his nose and throwing rocks yeah. at sheep, you know? Maybe we should actually uplift the child instead of shitting on him. But anyway, the, uh, William Henry Island was obsessed with him, and he started procuring letters from Shakespeare. Yes. So he'd turn up and go, Dad, I just met this guy who doesn't want to be named in a bar, and he has an original Shakespeare. Check out the letter. But was he making these up? I'm He's a fraud. He's also a so fraud. So he de starts developing. But he's a letter. different fraud than the previous fraud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. he's just inspired by him. This is that guy was called Thomas Chatterton, and right name is Rowley, whereas this guy is called William Henry Island. And he starts showing his dad, who's his dad's an expert in um, Shakespeare. Shakespeare. But he's such a good fraud, and he's forging these things that he starts fooling his dad. Yeah. And then he goes, by the way, there's an unknown book of Shakespeare's that no one's ever read. That I'm going to get my hands on. Everyone's like, whoa. He writes this book called Vortigan and Rowena. 
Evan Reese goes, God, Shakespeare is fucking well off form on this day. <laughs> <laughs> he just he wrote a real dud. Yeah, it was a piece of shit. <laughs> like pick someone shit. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like don't copy one of the greats. Tried to write a fake Shakespearean <laughs> yeah, play. It's yeah, really hard. Yeah. Like the hardest. <laughs> it really hard. You have to still write an amazing Genuinely, story. Genuinely, yeah. Go for like fucking Harry Styles before you take on John Lennon. You yeah. know what I mean? Like seriously. I found a Bob Dylan song. It's like, the Venga bus is coming and everybody's jumping. Yeah, it's, <laughs> he went high. I respect this. I've got a soft spot for these guys. I just like the thought process of it. Okay, so he, he writes the play. He writes the play. Everyone's like, this is a pile of shit, but it's Shakespeare. So with Shakespeare's title on it, it's going to sell, isn't it? Yeah. Which reminds me of, um, did you know Al Pacino's dad and Tarantino's dad, Sal Pacino and Tony Tarantino? <laughs> Teamed up together. I know. And they, <laughs> they released movies called Tarantino Pacino. <laughs> in the late 90s. Yeah. And they sell them straight to DVD in the Asian market and make fucking hundreds of thousands of pounds. Because <laughs> it's under the banner Pacino Tarantino. And they started a group called the Silver Foxes. And it was all the, it was, was it all the like absentee fathers? Yeah. So, so the Silver Foxes is like a group of absentee parents <laughs> whose kids don't speak to them. I found out they consist of, now it started with Sal and Tony, Sal Pacino and Tony Tarantino. <laughs> they started it. It now has Pat, Patsy Swayze, mother of Patrick, Jenny Crawford, Cindy's mum, Christine Johnson, Magic's mum, Nikki Robbins, Tony Robbins' mum. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Robbins' mum. That's so funny because Tony Robbins is a motivational speaker. Yeah. And then his mom's probably just a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of like this. He's like, Shakespeare presents. Fair enough, you know? Yeah. Like, we should have called this podcast Beyonce <laughs> Princess Diana Secrets or something. Would have gotten more hits. But um, this guy, this uh, promoter's like, hey, should we put this play on, uh, on, on uh, April Fool's Day? He's like, why? He's like, because the whole thing stinks of a prank. Because <laughs> it's just like, there's no, f how insulting. Well, this guy must have been like fucking hurt, you know, I've written yeah. this thing. But they do the play and the audience just starts laughing because it's so shit. And, <laughs> and everyone walks out and then no one has performed this play since until 2008 when someone did it as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite the story, really. I enjoy that. He, um, what's funny is that he was called William Henry Island, but his dad called him Samuel because his dad's name was Samuel. But here's the weird part. His dad called him Samuel because he had a brother that died that was called Samuel. <laughs> and so when the brother died, his dad just started calling him Samuel, <laughs> which I think you can start to see where he might start being a fraud and start going, yeah, I don't just, know who I am and maybe I want to fuck with my dad. Yeah. I and just, show him who I, I really want, am. I just want my dad to call me by not my dead brother's <laughs> name. Yeah, Is yeah. that so hard? Yeah. You can see the seeds of fraud. I don't know if being... it worked. I feel like he got home after that play was put on that night. He said, Samuel, go to bed. Well, no. So he's, yeah, go to bed forever with the other Samuel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I killed him. But yeah, so his dad was like completely ruined his reputation. He was considered like the authority on Shakespeare. And then it was like, you're a fucking idiot. You don't know anything <laughs> about Shakespeare. How did you read this Shakespeare book and think it was um, <laughs> it was actually about him? Um, but you just want it to be true. Yeah. You want to be the person that discovers like an yeah, undiscovered <laughs> Shakespeare, Shakespeare work. You know? Yeah. Oh, my God. Of course. That's amazing. I think, like, uh, I wonder what he got up to later in life. Just like, are you the guy? People, no, no, that was someone else. No, I know what he got up to. So he um, he became a sort of, uh, <laughs> like, uh, not a hate figure, but his rep was out the window. And so what he did is he went. Um, the son. Yeah. William Henry Island. He said, um, he said, <laughs> he should have just written a book called I'm Not Samuel. Um <laughs> He then tried to release it as a, just a work. Going, All right, look, guys, it's not Shakespeare, but it is mine. <laughs> and everyone, it doesn't matter. It's shit either way, you know. <laughs> just because you, you know, he's like, you know, but um, he died in um, as every single writer from that era seems to die in absolute squalor. Yeah, he died quite poor, but like was doing well. Like he, he just wrote gothic novels and poetry and stuff, and they did do well. But he's always in debt as prison. prison. Perpetually impoverished and constantly forced to borrow money from friends and strangers. But he, uh, yeah, I think he sort of carried on, but he was a sort of outcast to the writing industry because he 
broken the rules, you know? <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. I uh, I endeavor to defraud someone. Who do you want to defraud? I don't know. I just need the chance and the idea. Mm. But, you know, it's hard to, like, think of a good scam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've all been done. Yeah. There's great... I mean, you'll hear... You know, it's easy to say the Tinder swindler's an asshole, but it's also like... That's like, it's still an insane skill mm. to just be able yeah. to start talking to someone and then mm. convince them to give you all their money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Madoff documentary on Netflix, you seen that? Oh, it's great. Mm. Yeah. The thing is, Bernie Madoff was just a psychopath, though. Mm. Yeah. It's not really that. There was no, like, humanity mm -mm -mm -mm. in him. I think there's much humanity in the Tinder Swindler. He found recently his uh, Ferrari broke down on a beach in um, Spain. Don't know why he's driving along the beach. Well, because he's a Tinder swindler. Yeah. Of course, baby. <laughs> he thinks he's he thinks he's an eighties music video. But he drove onto a beach in Spain. I think he ran out of petrol. <laughs> and he was found with a girl who didn't know who was, and she'd already given him like twenty five k. He's not stopped whatsoever. He can't stop. He there's, cannot stop, baby. There's got to be. The thing is not. I haven't actually seen the doc. So, like, if I met him right now, I vaguely, I've seen photos. Yeah. So I vaguely know, if we, know yeah. what he looks like. But I don't think I know what he looks like. So most people haven't seen the Tindler Swindler. Well, he's not even very good looking or anything like that. You know, it's not like, it's not, you know, you don't really get it. But he just does it so well. He promises this life. And then I can't get to my account. And then it's a grand. Then he gets them to ring the credit card company and okay the transaction. So he's not actually frauding anyone. <laughs> so they're just <laughs> fucked. It's very, very bad. But William wrote a book called... This is The Sun, yeah? W William's The Sun. Yeah, The Fraudster. I can't remember. And it's like, this book sounds actually quite good. It was just about his fraudulence. Like a, a memoir. Yeah, just how he did it, what he did, you know? He came clean. Yeah, he came clean. He got paid £300 for the rights of the <laughs> Vortigan and Rowena <laughs> and a promise of half of all, all the profits. Jury Lane Theatre. So, in Covent Garden. I mean, 300 pounds then would be like, I don't know, a lot. Yeah. A you could buy a house. 300 grand or 3 million. Who knows? <laughs> Google. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, the first act went really smoothly. And then the audience started listening respectfully. <laughs> Late in the play. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, they just started to turn on it. Went, Wait a second. This is not Shakespeare. This is way too shit. <laughs> So he moved to France, worked in the French National Library, continued to publish books. And he released his own book about the the play and uh, everyone went, no, we, we're still all right, thank you very much. <laughs> we don't need I'd like you. to read it. Yeah. Why I'd not? give him a shot. It might not be that bad. You know, if you go into it not expecting Shakespeare. Yeah, my dad always called me my dead brother's name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what, his actual life book? No, I think that'd be good. Yeah. I think we have another movie on our hands. I really do. Right, we've stumbled upon many movie Many plots. movies. Who would play him? Let me think. He's a good actor at the moment. Who am I liking? Mm. Timothy Charlemagne. No, don't like him. Who's the guy who played Bear in Sex in the Snow? No, I'm joking. Um, Bear. <laughs> oh, no, he's not called that, is he? Who's Bear? I can't remember. Oh, you mean Mr. Big? <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> joking. He got me, dude. Uh, I know, I know. Um, he's a good new actor. Who have I watched recently that's good? Well, they got to be young, right? Well, no, I'd say I'd say he's sort of 25 or 30 doing this. <clears> okay. <throat> Who's the Irish guy that's just got nominated for an Oscar? Oh, that guy's Barry amazing. Yeah, he's Hilton good. Or something he's like good. That. Yeah. Mm. He was in a film with a guy I knew called Cosmo. We did a film together in 2011 on YouTube called Charity Case. Check it out if you want. <laughs> so so if you need your palate cleansed after you watch the Red yeah. Richardson special, yeah. you can check watch out that. the film Red started called Charity Case. Yeah, with Cosmo Jarvis, who was in a film called, I can't remember the film, but it's an Irish <laughs> movie uh, with okay. the guy in it. His name I'm not going to try and pronounce. Um, they were in it together, and it's like a gangster film. Come on, Jody. This all sounds very sad. When I'm Pacino looking at you, well, I'm, I'm not looking at your brain. I'm looking at your Google, Jody. I'm looking into your Google. Wait, I'll find it now, for fuck's sake. Why am I always having to prove myself on this bloody podcast? Cosmo Jarvis was in a film called... Uh, 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 why is it so annoying to read... 
Calm with Horses. And he was with Barry Keoghan, who's the kid. Yes. He was just been nominated for an Oscar. So there we go. I'm two degrees from Hitler, and I'm two degrees from an Oscar. How are you two degrees we from Hitler? We worked out on the podcast, because my ex-headmaster had met Hitler in the 30s. Oh, yes. Two mm-hmm. degrees from Hitler. And two degrees from an Oscar. So... That should have been your special name. What, Two Degrees from Hitler? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can still change it. No, I think the reverence is special. Two Degrees from Hitler with no reference. <laughs> two degrees. That sounds like your viewpoint, though. Yeah, is yeah close I know. To that, that's the problem. <laughs> people are going to be like, oh, wow. Yeah. I, you'll get a lot of views, just out there, uh, very disappointed people. Yeah, like, yeah. He doesn't <laughs> men- mention our movement once. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to threaten his wife. I think this guy thinks this was a, there was a holocaust. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Also, this is quite, uh, I think, for the time now, I get the feeling we're not far off this. August 10th, the mob of peasants overtakes the convent of St. Peter in Austria and murders Ignaz Anton von Indemauer. Because he had a long, annoying name and they were sick of trying to say it. No, what he was is he was a duke, a sort of feudal feudal duke, noble wanker. Holding all the cards. Holding all the cards. He also banned exporting because at the time, Napoleon, I expertly covered, if you want to hear a masterclass on Napoleon, go back in the episodes, um, was trashing everything, just fucking Europe up, being the little top G he was at the time. And... um, (laughs) This guy was like, we need to stop exporting stuff and keep everything in Austria. And so all the peasants were like, well, that's the only way we make money. And he's like, I don't give a shit. And they're like, oh, that's cool. And they went into his uh, his house and <laughs> dragged him into the street and Colonel gaddafi him. Did they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. On the evening of his arrival, hundreds of peasants from Burs and Montenfond, led by a baker named Fran Joseph Tschoffen, <laughs> I love the bakers just gone, I've had enough of this bullshit. Yeah. The the people need my baguettes, and he will not stop this. I feel like bread wouldn't have traveled that far in no. the 1700s. It's not, not like bread's annoyed. making yeah. it. Bread doesn't travel that far now. Yeah. No, it doesn't at I don't all. know if a, why a baker really had it, but I guess he the guy in general. Mm. Or, yeah, he just wanted to kill someone, and he found his way in. He stole the monastery and captured him. The amount of people who've been killed in monasteries in history is not... They think it's this, like... It's not a safe place. Yeah, they're like, this is a sanctuary. Yeah. You can't do it, Al. You, loads of people have been done here before, mate. Um, this guy tried to... The priest tried to uh, rescue him. Last person you want on your side is a priest. I hate to say it when it's combat time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sharpen that cross, buddy. You're <laughs> yeah, going to need a knife. Yeah, we're going to need a bigger, bigger cross. <laughs> They were tortured for hours before being murdered by members of the mob. They don't need the torture. Stabbed to death with swords, dragged to his feet to the courtyard and shot. Could have done that to start with. Had I been there, I would have said, let's just shoot him first. So you're, you'd bring a sympathetic yeah. Maybe eye to back the execution. The you go, oh my God, look over there. That man's taking bread to front. Blam. I don't think I would have involved, actually. I don't know what I would have. I think I would have moved to Thailand. <laughs> I'd be just start the full moon party. They'd be like, who the fuck are you? I'd be like, I think I'm going to go to Thailand, actually. This fu- is fucking cold and you're all dead. This place is shit. The thing is, if you go to Thailand in 2023, you feel sick for like a week, just adjusting oh, to course. the water and food. I've had all the jams. If I had yeah, yeah, yeah. my then, face, would be like, my face is three times the size yeah, of what e- it used e- to be. E- even if they had the capability of just getting you to Thailand then without vaccinations. Oh, I'd get like, it'd be a horrible. Scabies or whatever How was. was your vacation? Well, three members of my family died, yeah. but, you know, other than that, I had Tigers, a good time. Tigers, monkeys, it'd be crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got bitten in the face by a wild monkey, and now uh, I have gangrene. Not good at all. On my face. Not good at all. Face but I just screen. think, we're not far off this, are we? You sort of see, like, well, how much security is Matt Hancock going to have for the rest of his life? Do you think, like, someone's going to hit him at some point? Yeah. Who's the guy who just got off paying all his tax and said he forgot to do it? Nadim Zahari. Yeah. He's another one. You know, it's just like this constant. That not a day goes past when we don't find out in the papers that one of the people in charge is breaking their own rules. Well, what should we do? Take him to the, out into the street. Would you stop the torture of Matt Hancock? Yes. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't. 
think torturing someone. <laughs> what if it was like funny, like someone was? I uh, no, I would nipples. say I would do it and say like, um, if you want to be tortured, you have to call this number at eight a.m. and they will call you back for an appointment. What Make if you it, want to stop being tortured? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, if you want to be tortured. Yeah, you got to be on hold. Yeah. Whilst we're I put tortured. him on hold and say, we'll get to your torture. No, that's how you touch him. What you do is... Let you, him think it's going to happen. You put his, you put the tip of his penis in a vice, crunch it and go, they will let you out as soon as you can get an appointment. Yes. With the NHS. So he's got a ring. Ah, and if it's my one, Parkside Medical Center. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. What? <laughs> what? It's like, aren't you a doctor? Yeah. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> and what do you want? <laughs> I, it's, it's my Hancock. <laughs> I, I, I need to see someone. He, <laughs> yeah, I no. If I was to punish Matt Hancock, I just um, I'd make it. I may. I'd make him spend every day with his ex-wife. That uh, punishment, just like, although maybe he wouldn't care. He, he seems probably wouldn't like care, he got over it pretty it's quick. Matty bounce back, the she, bounce back king. She just be he's got no feelings whatsoever. <laughs> no, <he's>, he, his, <laughs> the fake crying was. On so, time a celebrity, it's like he's crawling with spiders. He doesn't know what they are. Yeah, he you doesn't know? have fear. He thinks he's home. <laughs> he doesn't have fear. He's yeah. a psychopath. <laughs> But yeah, you know. all right, Matt, we'll call you back. The doctor's going to call you back. It's, I just need to come in. Sorry, you can't. And then, then we get, maybe, maybe they'd care more. I like it when, because when Rishi, they went, do you use private? And it's like, well, I'm not here to answer. It's like, just say, we all know you do. Just say, yeah, of course I do. The NHS fucking stinks. <laughs> because of us. Well, yeah. Un underfunding. Oh, right, guys. We're getting near to the end. Are we? I feel like so. we're just getting started. I know. That's what it feels like with this podcast. Time flies when you're learning facts. <laughs> Are you, or or <laughs> questioning something <laughs> someone's telling yeah, you. Yeah, let me Google that. Guy. <laughs> Are you sure about that? I'm not sure. Imagine if everything gets wiped out, but this podcast is the only source of information <laughs> that survives. <laughs> it's just like this is all. They have. I really, I really, I. And, they I, go, and this happened. I worry. And then they go, "What? What did they tell you?" They said they didn't know and couldn't be asked to Google it. I don't, uh, <laughs> really we're trying good. to rebuild civilization, and these two morons are all we have to go off of. Actually, we found one of their bodies frozen. We reanimated them. Just kill them. Just, yeah, just fucking shoot them. These idiots. They're the reason the world went to shit. <laughs> What is Wikipedia they speak of? <laughs> it's like a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Bible on, yeah. oh, on the electric brain machine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> David Rittenhouse dies. He is an uh, American astronomer, inventor, clockmaker, mathematician, surveyor, scientific instrument, classman, and public official. And great, great, great grandfather of... Of, uh, of Kyle Rittenhouse, of Kyle, of Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> who later killed a few people and got that, away that, with that's it. That's what I was going to say. I've Googled it. And <laughs> look, there is no solid proof, but they probably are related. I've never heard of any other Rittenhouses. No. So this guy invented the clock. <laughs> he was superseded by his more famous great 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 <laughs> grandson. <laughs> so what he did was he was an astronomer, uh, clockmaker, mathematician, surveyor, and an inventor of Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> his finest work, he says. No, he was um, by 13. This guy's a genius, man. 13, he'd mastered Isaac Newton's laws of motion and gravity. 17, he constructed a clock with wooden gears. 19, he started a specific instrument shop at his father's farm in what is now Valley Forge Medical Center and Hospital. So he'd done fucking shit, loads, but unfortunately, because of his surname... And his great 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 grandson. <laughs> None of that matters. No. <laughs> because, you know, at nineteen you made a hospital. At twenty one, Kyle shocked and killed three people <laughs> yeah. after travelling through state lines with an AR fifteen. And then he got away with it. Mm, uh... Got away with it. Though to be fair, two of them were pedophiles. <laughs> Not that he knew that. One of them was he was the luckiest fucking guy in the world. He had no clue. <laughs> he had literally that's like throwing a grenade onto a bus. And then finding out that eight, eight of the ten people were neo-Nazis. There's no way two of them, but they both weren't, were they? I, I thought think one they were was... both nonsense. Let's have a look. 
<laughs> Let's have a look. Listen, the, the future historians listening will know. <laughs> yeah, they, like, I, mean, I mean, I should have Googled. What but... is this pedophile they speak of? What is a pedophile? It's someone that had a, a child wife. And they go, well, but that's our wives now. That is who we are married to. <laughs> is that is the only women left? And they go, they were pedophobic back then. They <laughs> yeah, they were... Backward society. <laughs> um, you know they put people like us in cages? <laughs> <laughs> that would, that's a... That would be a that's a crazy society you're living in. If somebody starts to use the word pedophobic, they're yeah, pedophobes. That's like a shoot me. You're a pedophobe. You're afraid of pedophobes. It's funny. There's a rapper called Twenty One Savage who uh, he wants to freeze himself. But I was on his Instagram. He wants to cry. I also would like to freeze. That's well, not a crazy. That's not a crazy years. thing to do. Some people want to be cryogenically frozen in case. They but figure I, I, out. How I literally to save look, them looked, and bring at his, back. looked at his Instagram and it's just him on private jets and stuff. And it's like, mate, you don't want to be brought back in a hundred years' time. Like, where's the PJ guys? And they're like, hey, idiot, you're the reason we're all fucking dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it might be being like a slave trader that, that comes back and goes, oh, how is everyone doing? And, yeah, you're not that popular anymore, buddy. <laughs> we fucking hate you. Yes. We hate you. We threw a statue in of you into years. the fucking river last year. Yeah, what yeah, we're going to yeah. do with you. But yeah, so I, got, I, I shouldn't just say that two of his victims were because... You got, you should know that, you know what I mean? Uh, Carl Rittenhouse victims. Well, he was acquitted, so I guess they weren't victims. They were just um, people he had a fight with and shot and killed. Mm -hmm. Rittenhouse had an AR-15. The man he shot, Joseph Rosenbaum, was uh, carrying a plastic bag with a toothbrush, <laughs> toothpaste, socks, deodorant, and some papers. I don't care if you're Bruce Lee. With that bag. That's an unfair fight. <laughs> that is. <laughs> <laughs> Some rolling papers, deodorant, <laughs> socks, okay. toothpaste. But was he a pedophile, Red? No, we didn't say read the contents of his bag. Listen, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what, what? You said two being killed, two pedophiles. Oh. Which... He had a mental health issues. He was on antidepressants, treated by bipolar. He'd been in a hospital following like, a suicide attempt. Okay, so, you know. That's not really, that's not the same as being a pedophile. They, he'd been homeless a few times. <laughs> okay, I can't though. That's okay, not... I'm trying to find out. Uh, Just Google. Oh, he was molested by a stepfather. That's not. <laughs> Red. Red, that's not. That's... Okay, no, 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 no. Yeah, he spent most of his adult life in prison, starting at age 18 for sexual conduct with five preteen boys. I think that's a pedophile. That was at the bottom. That was at the bottom. <laughs> they I don't put... know why they told us about his toothpaste <laughs> and his socks. They should put that at the top. That's, that should be the one in, in the first things. No, I'm still... Fucking Rittenhouse did not know this. <laughs> no, he Could didn't. have been Malala for all he cared. You know what I mean? <laughs> he could have been the could have been Forrest Gump. But Malala, Rittenhouse would have fucking shoot, shot Forrest shoot Gump. Malala and the bullet would just go through the old hole and she'd be okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she'd get back into Cambridge and do another Masters. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's happened to Malala, by the way? Well, she people just got bored of her saying girls should have an education. We're all like, yeah, yeah, we know. Mm. We do that here. Yeah. And but then she got a degree. She did, yeah. Now she like she's like CEO married. of like a fossil fuel company. Yeah. <laughs> she's fracking in the land in Alabama. Uh, I don't know. Um, we're Alaska. We're... I wanted her and Greta to get married. That'd be a cool power couple. I want her and Rittenhouse to get married. They do. They'd have the coolest uh, wife and uh, wife and husband uh, dinner party trick where he'd pull out a gun and shoot through her hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad. Um, Dad, uh, they say opposites attract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Malala, um, well, I have something uh, to tell you. I'm dating someone. You might have seen him on the news. Okay. Um, he also has been a victim of gun crime, his <laughs> yeah. own gun crime, uh, where he was violently attacked and had to defend himself is what I've come to learn since, <laughs> we, started, toothpaste. since we started having sex. <laughs> and uh, they never mentioned his sexual prowess on mm. the news, but I have to say is a lot of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, now don't be alarmed. He's gonna come in. He he is armed. He he goes everywhere with his AR-15. It's like a child to him. Uh, well, we don't know. The thing is with Malala, 
No one knows what, she, like, she just says, oh, I think women should go to school. That's not exactly, like, that progressive, you know? Like, we don't know what else major. she thinks. She's super brave. She might be, like, a fucking Nazi. Yeah, we don't know Hitler what else. send girls to school. We have no, <laughs> what else. We have, yeah, we have no <laughs> idea what else she thinks. What do you think of gay people, Malala? <laughs> well, yeah. That's maybe why they've gone, we like you as this person. Yeah, well, that happened, no with, talking. That happened to Aung San Suu Kyi, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, for, for 30 years, she's like, hey, we need to free Myanmar. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, give her a Nobel Prize. Yeah, yeah, you're great, Aung San Suu Kyi. And then they're like, oh my. Then the government uh, felt the 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 change in the wind, and they're like, yeah, we'll give you some power. And then they started committing genocide against the yeah. uh, Rohingya people. Or, and then the they were like, yeah, yeah, you're well, you're part of the government now. She's like, I am. Yes, mm -hmm. I'd like to be in charge. Actually, yep. and they're like, why don't you go talk at the UN and just deny we're committing genocide? She's like. They're like, well, the country's a Buddhist majority, and actually the Buddhist majority doesn't believe it's a genocide, so if you want to be uh, the governor, uh, leader of a government in a democracy, either way, you have to convince the Buddhist majority, and you're Buddhist, so you got to convince them that, you know... And then she goes and says that. Everyone stops giving a fuck about her, and now the, the junta in Myanmar have sentenced her to life, a life of not even house arrest, which is what she used to be under. Now she's just in prison for the rest of her life, and she's like fucking 80. Mm -hmm. Live long enough to become the villain, yeah. as the old saying goes. It's like OJ. Had he died in 93, he'd be Tom Hanks. Anyway, he was he really would have. He was a, he was a treasure. He was a great actor. A fucking treasure. Honestly, watch the doc about him. I said it before. Stop watching on episode five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just... just... Your, your heart will be, be full. Um, <laughs> great man until that day. Um, okay, so next victim. Oh, my God. Anthony Huber, 26-year-old, grew up in Kenosha, avid skateboarder. Can you tell us if he's a pedophile, please? <laughs> no, it's, he wasn't, Red. He oh, was at the, the, was the protest guy. with his girlfriend. It was only the one guy, I'm pretty his sure. His girlfriend said he pushed me out the way and ran off. Ooh. I tried to grab him, Gittins told CNN. Let's say. Oh, so he chased after fucking Rittenhouse. I think Huber eventually caught up to Rittenhouse and tried to stop him by hitting him with a skateboard. Okay, if you hit someone with an AR-15... I don't hit someone with a skateboard if they got an AR-15. Well, you're in, a, in the moment, you're trying to... I think it's, it's a Native to... American Indian saying, do not hit someone with a skateboard if they're holding an AR-15. I don't think... I don't know. Chief but... Little Hawk. Um, the... the single blow was not enough to bring Rittenhouse down. No, of course, you've seen him. He's a fat little bastard. <laughs> Within seconds of the tussle... It's not a tussle. He's got a gun. <laughs> Rittenhouse fired a single fatal shot into Huber, who can be seen staggering away, then collapsing onto the ground in video footage of the incident. An obituary described Hughes as an artistic young man with a quick wit whose favourite thing was skateboarding, hence the skateboard he had on him. Died a hero fighting for a cause he believed in. <laughs> Just Oh, here we go. Huber spent time in prison twice. First for violating probation after strangling his brother and again for kicking his sister. So not quite. We don't well, know. Well, kicking his sister. Yeah. Come on. We all kicked our sister. He had bipolar as well. Rittenhouse hates people. He <laughs> probably didn't even know it was a Black Lives Matter march. He's just on the <laughs> dumb march. He's killing the mentally ill. ill. Fucking hell, man. So this guy's not a pedophile. He has strangled his sister, <laughs> but that's not bad. His sister might be really annoying. Yeah. And look, people fight. Prince Harry, they do fight. Families fight each other. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> I need to, no need to write a book about, or shoot someone about it. Um, you just put you just put Prince Harry and Kyle Rittenhouse <laughs> in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking troll Pierce Morgan over here. I know. We've had a bloody nuff. Um, this one's called Gage Gross Cruet. This one? What he read is, we're the not victim. reading, it's not a game show. We're reading the, the victims victim. of a murderer. I know, but I'm just trying to see. I actually feel quite tasteless doing this. Yeah, it, it feels tasteless, you doing it. Me and Jody feel the same way. I know, but we're just trying to check. because it <laughs> no, but we, we know for sure that only one of them was. There's no way that he accidentally just killed two. So, along with Huber, he chased Rittenhouse. But they did chase Rittenhouse after. They didn't mention this after he shot and killed Rosenbaum. So he wasn't just chasing him with a skateboard. That's very... no. Well, you would chase someone after they I, kill no, it's someone. That's amazing. That's what I mean. The fact is, Anthony Huber, I thought that he just started smacking him with a skateboard. He didn't. He started hitting Rittenhouse because he saw him shoot someone dead. So Huber is actually a hero. Sorry about your sister getting strangled, but he's a hero, isn't he? 
Yeah, brilliant. They should have mentioned that at the top again, like the other guy. <laughs> well, how did you understand it, Red? You just thought he was being attacked with a skateboard. I thought he just went up to Rittenhouse and started smacking him with a skateboard. <laughs> no, Red, well, I'm glad you're not on the jury. <laughs> Jesus, well, he would have been acquitted again. Yeah, he would have. I think I was the jury. <laughs> they were all, yeah, most of them weren't listening. <laughs> they were stand-up specials coming out that week. <laughs> Guys, have you heard about the Red? What, the, how, is the, how is jury duty? Well, there was this fucking jury. He wouldn't shut up about his stand-up special. He kept all, he kept getting us to share the link <laughs> yeah yeah while we were listening to the evidence so this guy was armed with a pistol gage had a pistol with him which i don't think he sh- I, it's a bit weird when someone just has a gun on them what's well, america you're allowed to yeah he also had medical supplies <laughs> okay um all of which were standard for him to bring to protest protest so he always brings a gun and medical supplies so he didn't die this guy he got his bicep shot off shot shot off yeah. lost 90 percent of his right bicep fuck. fuck no more fucking ripping it in the gym for this guy Yes, yeah, so he got shot by Rittenhouse. Mm, doesn't say he's a nonce. So one out of three. <laughs> one out of three. But look, one of them, one of them brought, just walks around with medical supplies and a gun, which is fucking weird. I don't know. You know. I don't live there. All I know is that... <laughs> look, in my book, uh, In Defense of Kyle, coming out in March of this, you know, I'm joking. It's bad. It's so fucking bad. I don't know why uh, this kid had a 20... He's, he's young... I did some deep dives into him as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> cultural differences. It is cultural differences. I just don't know why he had a gun on him. And I, I, it's heroic, but if I saw someone shoot someone with an AR-15 I'm, and I don't have a, a gun myself, I'm not going to use my skateboard, you know? Because guess what? You're getting shot. Because yeah, you're not a hero. <laughs> yeah. No, what? it's not a hero, man. It's like, come on. But he probably thought that the guy was about to shoot other people. That's true. That is true. Um, and he did, Rittenhouse. But, he, yeah, anyway. <sighs> he was 17, Carl Rittenhouse, when he did that. How old is he now? Uh, this was 2020, so he's probably 20. Have you yeah. seen his girlfriend? It's quite hot. <laughs> Blonde. Blonde. She's, she's, she, <laughs> the NRA give you her when, when, you, <laughs> when you've done what you, what you were meant to do. <laughs> She posts loads of photos of them together. But she so clearly is like, would never go out with him if he hadn't murdered three people. <laughs> That's, That's so weird. Like, it's so fucking gross. He, he shot his way into pussy. Yeah, so, you know. While 17, David Rittenhouse constructed the clock with wooden gears. There we go. We're back to we're what back we were to talking him. about. 17 year old, you know, great, and, great, and great he got grandson. off. And I bet you if you spoke to Carl now, would he use his grandfather's wooden clock to turn back the time? And if he did, would he do it all again? I bet he would have done it all again. Well, it's not a time machine, right? <laughs> <laughs> Even a wooden clock, not a fucking time machine. Well, yeah, I was just trying to wrap it up quite nicely. I think you have. That was with, beautiful. With some poetry. Thank you. That is the end of today's episode. We are now going over to Patreon, where we have some exclusive hot content only to be heard by our loyal supporters who make what we do possible. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because a lot goes on there that doesn't happen here. Um, yeah, Harry's book came out. Everyone started talking about Diana, the paparazzi again, right? Mm-hmm. So we found the paparazzi that took a picture of Diana, and we're interviewing uh, him on the Patreon. With exclusive photos no one's ever no, seen. No, we're not doing photos. Jody, why do you always have to make it discuss? We've already no, the term I, I, I'm, the not, I'm not right saying like 100% the guy's going to show up, but unless you subscribe to our Patreon, you won't know. Yeah, in- indeed. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> thank you to our super geniuses, Matthew, Christopher, Spencer. We still love you. Goodbye. That was another episode of The Year Is. Thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Leave us a review. It all helps. I'd like to thank our producer, Jody, And also, I'd like to thank uh, Josh Weller for our intro music and song. It's, uh, it's very catchy. It's very nice. I'm sure you'll enjoy it at the beginning. So big thanks for Josh Weller. He's on Instagram at Josh Weller. Josh Weller. Follow him and uh, keep spreading the word of The Year Is. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>